You looked at that steno machine as a brand new Ferrari. It, it could have been a Ferrari, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, it's interesting though, is that you all also excelled at uh, Greg Shorthand, which had nothing to do with video gaming, which means that maybe abstract thinking and conceptualizing uh, is part of it. You took to that, which in Greg Shorthand, obviously you need to write correct outlines, but um, you have to have sort of a brain uh, that enjoys all of that really to excel at it. So you maybe had a number of things going for you and you didn't realize it when you went to reporting school. Yes. Um, so you became a reporter and um, basically freelance. You've never worked in court. Very little in court. I did do some substituting in court when I was in between freelancing firms. And I'm a pretty independent personality. And the one thing I feared was that I might get a judge who was overbearing or who I didn't get along with, and it would be the same people, the same chair every day. And so the prospect of freelancing attracted me because I would have more autonomy and control over my career, my vacations, my work hours, and see new people every day, new cases. And that worked out very well for me. The times I did come into court eventually were times where they wanted someone to provide accurate real time and there wasn't someone available. And so I would come in for a specific case and provide real time. And I always enjoyed that because, again, I wanted to do real time, have people watch it for pay, extra pay. <laughs> And I got to do that, and I enjoyed that. Other than the extra pay or any pay you received, what personal and professional benefits have you derived from uh, the career of court reporting? Oh my gosh, I could never begin to list them here on the spot. But I know without a doubt that this is the career I should have gone into, and, and that I was made to do this, among other things in life. And. God, as I have mentioned already a couple times, gave me a healthy talent for court reporting. But I'm very quick to explain to people that what I have achieved, there had to be a certain type of work done for me to achieve it. Uh, the talent alone would not have done it. And I'm a pretty analytical person, and I f have figured out the things that it would take for me to excel beyond where the, my talent would take me alone. And basically my talent alone would only take me to 260 probably, um, enough to pass the RMR. But the speed contest was a whole different thing. And um, I, I think I invented some new concepts or invented at least for myself in learning what it took to really gain speed. And once I discovered what those things were, I redoubled my efforts on them uh, to the extent that, that I proposed to go for a world record and NCRA cooperated with me in uh, making such an event. And the first try at 360 words a minute in 2003, I fell short 92.5% or 90, something like that. So I wanted to try again. So next year, they graciously let me try again. And I did it, 97.22% and Guinness World Record. And I'm so thankful for that. And I absolutely know that the things I applied to do that, everyone else can apply to their own writing and it will help them in the same manner it helped me. And so I love teaching that now. I love taking the blessings God has given me and sharing them with other people and seeing them light up and come back to me and tell me how it's helped their careers. And when you're happy in your court reporting life, it makes you a lot more likely to be happy in your family life. Um, court reporting can be very stressful. Uh, it, most of us, or many of us, are perfectionists. And it's not a good field for perfectionists <laughs> because we're always beaten down by reality. We, we can never be perfect. And no matter how easy the job is, we, we don't even do perfect. So it's, it's, it's sobering and humbling, this career. And so I try to bring an optimistic aspect to it, where we strive for protect, per, perfection, knowing we're not going to achieve it, but we always strive for it, and we be happy with our results, and we continue to, to push ourselves. And it's, 
it's extremely rewarding. And the hard work I've put into court reporting has actually made me work smart and not hard to where I work far less hard than most other reporters do. And I make money, more money than most of them, except the firm owners probably. Because you put in the work. Because I put in the work of building a strong dictionary and put in the work of the speed, um, this, this accrues many, many benefits. Uh, number one, when you write short by memorizing lots of briefs and working them into your writing, uh, you, you're doing less work. It's less damage on your body, a less chance of having the repetitive strain injuries. You, you're more relaxed. Um, you enjoy writing more. When, when writing is at a nice slow pace and you're coming up with briefs, you enjoy that more than writing everything out and having to pound that keyboard to keep up. It gives you pleasure to write in that manner. So you basically invested in yourself and in your career and uh, in your, your newfound profession as being a writing evangelist. Mm -hmm. uh, you have offered that uh, to other people uh, and I, I guess it gives you a source of satisfaction when you see other people improve uh, their skills. Um, Absolutely. W one of the things that just occurred to me uh, to ask is, uh, do you have any bad days writing? Is that, is that possible? Yeah, yes, I do. And um, one of them was in a contest last year, the real-time contest. <laughs> <laughs> um, nervousness struck out of the blue when I usually don't get nervous. Um, it had to do probably with, gee, everyone expects you to win, and it just got hard, and you just didn't do very well. Yeah. Oh, no, it's starting to go down, and then it, it avalanched or snowballed. Yeah. And so um, I, I do have bad days, but the methods I use help to alleviate those. They give me a huge advantage to write as short as I do and, and to do the daily speed practice I do already gives me a huge advantage. So probably even when I have a bad day, it's probably a good day for a lot of reporters. If you've ever had any bad day, did you ever sit there and envision yourself in another profession? <laughs> yes, you know, working with lawyers <laughs> is a thing unto itself. And lawyers have a pretty bad reputation and they are the brunt of a lot of jokes. But when I really think about it, less than 5% of the lawyers make it a hard time for us. Most of them are professional, easy to get along with, friendly. But just a few of them can ruin it for you. And, I, and I've had a few of those throughout my career. And, and uh, part of that is what made me enjoy captioning so much and moving out of the judicial field. Well, just a few of those can do that to you. But I have to keep in mind that that's just a few people. And it goes the other way, too. There are a few court reporters that have turned off lawyers. And we are our own worst enemy. If we are unprofessional or treat a lawyer wrong, he may become the next guy promoting recording in our courtroom.